Throughout San Diego County, people have a long and rich history of local community pride and protection of our region's clean air and water, natural resources, and quality of life. But the region faces challenges, like all others throughout the world, from climate change and its impact on our clean air and water, natural lands, and the health and well-being of our people and future generations. Since 2008, awards from the Blascomia Rose Fund have helped to advance the San Diego Foundation's climate initiative by supporting research that enhances our understanding of how to address climate change in the San Diego region. This research has focused on the potential local impacts of global climate change and ways to reduce our local greenhouse gas emissions and minimize climate change impacts. I'd like to introduce Scott Anders, one of our Blasco recipients and a leading researcher on greenhouse gas emissions in the San Diego region. The state of California is one of the leading states in the country and one of the leading regions in the world that's working to address climate change. It has one of the most ambitious laws in the world aimed at reducing greenhouse gas emissions. How much does the San Diego region contribute by way of emissions to California's greenhouse gas emissions? What are the ways that we can reduce our region's contribution of greenhouse gas emissions to the world? This is what Scott Anders' project looks to address. The most important piece of the BLAST program was building the capacity at EPIC, but then also allowing that capacity to serve the region. Yeah, I would say that the Blasker funding that we've received has helped us to develop a competency in this area. I mean, we had the skill set, I think, to do this work, but the specific skill and knowledge to do this kind of work, um, we didn't necessarily have. And so the Blasker funding has allowed us to develop those competencies, build that capacity for the region. So now in the region, we have you know, these skills available. Um, and our, like, like I said, our reports and our data is, are, are pretty widely used. Um, and we've worked with a host of of other people as a result of that work. So for example, right now, we have a contract with the city of San Diego to help them develop their climate mitigation and adaptation plan. So, you know, this is really an outgrowth of our work starting with the, with the Blasco grant. Um, and on the policy side, um, you know, there had never been a, a county, again, never been a countywide look at the kind of policies that we were looking at. We did a pretty broad uh, brush of transportation policy and building policy. In fact, there were two reports. I, I don't know if I said that, but the second project we did was looking at transportation policy. We put out a detailed report and then building related policies. We put out a detailed report for that as well. And so those were a pretty deep dive into, I don't know, eight or ten policies in each paper looking at, you know, how much they could reduce in San Diego County, how much they might cost. And so that had never been done either. SANDAG has used our inventory as a basis for some of their climate planning. Um, so to give you an example, people are now starting to ask questions about one of the policies we looked at was um, having buildings disclose their energy consumption, kind of like a mile per gallon sticker on a car. The 2009 policy paper is more relevant now, and I think, than it was in 2009, mm -hmm. because because the sort of the political realities and some of the other realities of how are we going to get to these long-term cuts are kind of coming becoming clear. So people are saying, well, how can we do this? And um, you know, our paper at least is a step in the right our current work with this model, one of the things that we're doing that we believe is innovative is looking at the integration of measures to reduce greenhouse gases. Previously we thought about things in silos. So for example in transportation we thought you can have more efficient vehicles, you can have more electric vehicles, um, but it turns out that some of those things are connected and we, we've figured out those connections and built them into the model. So that's kind of some of the innovation I think that's happened in that. I mean, it's been great because it's helped us to, re to branch into a new area that we hadn't been working in before. It's given us an opportunity to work with students. For example, we work with students from the sciences that we may not have worked, worked with uh, otherwise. Um, it gave us an opportunity to link to people outside of our program here at, at the university. Here's a quote for you. One thing I know about all the work we've done for the Blaster Grant is that it's all wrong. <laughs> because, you know, it, these are estimates. And so, you know, we're, we're trying to say this is how many greenhouse gases emitted in 2007. Well, I mean, we didn't measure it. We're looking at, we were tracking fuel use and other things, and we're sort of estimating, extrapolating to get these numbers. So we know they're wrong. And anybody who would tell you that their number is right is also wrong. And same with the policy work we did. So, you know, but we, 
we have put things into perspective now. People understand, you know, what solar photovoltaics does versus retrofit. Good question. And we work that in, that dissemination into every project we do. You know, we, you know, we try to do as much of that outreach as we possibly could to get the word out. And then it kind of, you know, shows up in other people's blogs and then it, mm -hmm. it kind of goes. But.